All right, so here with our finished poster, I want to show you the elements involved and the things you are required to have for your poster are the type that you designed in some sort of colored effect way. You also need your spot illustration prominently featured, doesn't necessarily need to be central. And you need some sort of background that complements the type with your spot illustration. And I'm asking for a white border. Now here in my example, you can see that I've broken the border with my text. That's that's a good good reason to have a border. It gives you something to play with, but that is up to you. So let's look at all these components and let's look about how we can uh, improve them. So if I start turning these things off, we start to see some of the effects that I added on top of my spot illustration and on top of my type. So first of all, let's talk about the background. All right. So I'm starting with just a blank white background. And I created a gray square that was has a gradient overlay that gives me a slight border. Then I did a black one with a gradient overlay just to darken that gradient. And then I put over a composite um, photograph of billboards that were kind of stripped and you see all the different ads because it feels like post-apocalyptic and I like that. Then on top of that, I tried adding this other template. Maybe you remember that from the demo of this crazy kind of op art scene, but I don't like that anymore. That's too busy. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. That will save some memory. It's not something I think I might want to integrate later. Then on top of that, I composited yet another kind of torn uh, paper texture. So I wanted to composite those two together. And then what I did is I actually, instead of just using this, I used the magic wand and just stole the, the brightest bits from it and then duplicated it. So I have this torn paper now. Then I have my type. This is the first type I designed. My black version, my color version. And the way I can get a black version from my finalized color version is just to turn off all the effects. And then I decided, well, I want a different kind of type. <laughs> but before we get to that, on top of this composited background, I created a CMYK separation layer. So what we have here, if I turn off these background layers, and if I turn off the black and the gray, this was the action I showed you. You can see it highlight there under Carl's custom color separations, the CMYK full run. What it does is it splits into one file, the black, yellow, magenta, and cyan halftone dots that make up your image. It's basically, what if your digital high-res image were, were printed on really bad newsprint with really low dots per inch? It would look something like this with a magnifying glass. And it's made in these separate layers so that they are slightly offset from each other. So you can see that now magenta and cyan are turned on, and you can see that ma the magenta dots and the cyan dots overlap each other. And when they overlap, you get this kind of purple. If they were directly on top of each other, it would just be really muddy. So this is called optical mixing. And it gives you this nice kind of newspaper, vintage printing, silkscreen look. Now, if we add yellow to that, we start to get the full spectrum. Even though it's just yellow, magenta, and cyan layers, that's all there is, only three pixel colors on a white background, you start to see greens, you start to see purples, you start to see oranges, you see all the color mixing. Because each of these layers isn't 100% opaque. And then you need black on top of that if you want kind of the full value range. So I have those black dots. So once that's turned on, that really does a lot to help break up my background. So when I turn that back on, 
Now my background's a little bit more interesting looking. This is what I want for my background. That it's not just the photos composited together of the different torn paper. This is a large file, 1.6 gigs. So the computer's struggling a little bit to, to flip through these things. But it has all of this different texture, all of these different halftone dots. It's my own kind of background. The problem is it doesn't look so good for my spot illustration. It, it really doesn't hold up, right? Or for my text. So those are going to go on top of it. So the next layer is on top of the halftone. And what I did is I just used my lasso and I created a shadow just with my lasso, um, just a shape with my lasso on the black CMYK layer and just duplicated that to give me a slightly darker shadow. And then I did it again to make it even darker. So they're both at 80%. So to really darken that up, if I wanted to, I could combine those to merge them together. And then I could erase from them because maybe I want to soften that back edge a little bit. So I can do a soft, large brush, or if I'm feeling fancy, I could go to one of these more textured brushes that we'll learn about when we're doing digital painting. Oh, I don't want to paint with it though. Oh, slow computers are not fun. Instead, I want to just erase away from the edge, maybe. So let me change to my eraser and give that the kind of sloppy edge that I used last. Oh, but that's the brush tool. Ah, Photoshop's trying to be too smart. Oh, let's just use a regular brush. We'll get into that with digital painting. It's annoying how they've set them up. So just under general brushes, I'm going to be using the soft round pressure brush. Just so I can erase away gently at 61% opacity this back edge. You see how it's kind of fading now? But I want it sharper as it's close to my creature. So it's just, it gives a little grounding underneath. That's all. Okay, so now next layer, I have my type at the very top. Now this is a really helpful trick. You see how my border got overtaken by the textures I composited in? So at the very, somewhere, where is it? So at the top, I put in a layer of just the white borders as a 100% opaque layer. It's like putting a mat on top of everything. So I can see it clearly. Then I have the top type that I put in. And notice that I want this on top of the, uh, the CMYK separations so that it's nice and readable. If I put it underneath that, I'll just show you. Come on. There we go. Maybe it's not worth trying to show you, but it would just muddy it up. So the, I'm using the color separations to push the background behind. This is frustratingly slow. <laughs> so let's just, yeah, let's just keep that there and just turn the type on. La 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 la. And then the next thing I'm going to put on top of my spot illustration or on top of my background is my spot illustration. So it pops out nice. Oh my goodness. Okay. 
turn on no now that doesn't look right let's go back before I tried to do anything oh, before even that so whatever uh, decisions I made for my top type they're there then I made a top type copy which was more rainbowy, and I get to decide which one I like better, right? Maybe I like this one a little better. I don't need my sketches anymore, but you can see how I've followed my sketch pretty, ended up following um, them pretty clearly. Then I have just my spot illustration, but not the the placement I ended up using. So I made a duplicate of that. So I can actually get rid of that old one and get rid of all those sketches and turn on the spot illustration I do want. Right. And then I did a color uh, CMYK separation on just my spot. Right. So there it is. And if I put that on top of my spot, but only at 38%, you can see how those dots will merge with the, the duotone and full spectrum coloring underneath and break it up in a way that I think is kind of interesting, though it does muddy some of the lines. So then <laughs> I went back to assignment seven, where if you remember, we had all of our outlines as a vector, right? And then I took that vector outline layer and moved that on top of my spot illustration here. So when I turn that on, everything is black. And that really sharpens it up, but I don't like all of the solid black. That's why I did a color hold to begin with. But I feel like I need something in between that. So I made a duplicate of the black line layer and rasterized it so that even though it's at 100%, I erased away at some places. And maybe I'll fade it a little bit too. So you'll see that the dots now come through that black line work a little bit. But not so much that it's not clear. And if I take the whole thing down to maybe, yeah, let's try that, about 76%, then there won't be any kind of solid black once it catches up. So it's, it's ultimately compositing, but it's compositing with aspects that you are building. Compositing with your spot illustration, with your text, with your uh, vectors of type, and your different layer styles, until you get a poster you like. And there are so many different variations with type, with uh, backgrounds that you composite. Now I'm going to build the lower type, right, which is made of those three components. And then this drop shadow. At any time, you can mess with these things. I'm going to lighten this drop shadow up a little bit. It's a little sharp. I want it a little bit more subtle, maybe just the opacity down a little. I like that. All right. And if I, I'm just going to zoom in on that so you can see, because there's a lot going on. There's the halftone dot separation of the background. There's the line art around my spot, spot illustration. That's been erased away in some places to let that halftone dots come through. And then there's the texture and the gradient overlay on the my. And I think I actually might want to tone that down a little bit, to maybe soften it. If my computer was running faster, it'd be a little bit more responsive. 